Hi guys! In this video, we will check the Big Tree Tech Octopus board and show you all the details. You want to know more? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, here we have the octopus board from Big Tree Tech. Inside, we can find a small card with links at the back, the traditional yellow rubber duck, a Type-C USB cable and the board. Inside and at the back, there is a small bag with jumpers. This board is 160 by 100 millimeters and was designed for big printers. At the back, the PCB has the indication of all the pen names and polarity. The microcontroller is a 32-bit STM32F446, capable of running at 180 MHz. And there's an AT24C32 external EEPROM chip. At the left side, there's an 8-pin terminal block. Here is where the power is connected. The Octopus allows different power sources with common ground for the board, the stepper motors and the heat bed. The first two are for powering the stepper motors, the next two are for powering the board and the other two are for powering the heat bed. The remaining two are the output for the heat bed. Next to these connectors we have three fuses. These are replaceable fuses which makes it easier to swap if they blow out. On the board and next to the microcontroller, there is a small jumper that is used to select the board's power source, between the main power connector and the USB Type-C connector. With the jumper installed, the power from the USB is enabled. At the opposite side and on this Ethernet connector, we have a CAN bus port that can be used to connect expansion boards. Next is the USB connector, the memory card slot, the USB Type-C connector used for serial emulation and a reset button. Above the memory card slot, it's possible to install a Wi-Fi module. One of the main features of this board is the number of stepper motors it can control. The board has 8 slots for stepper drivers and 9 outputs for stepper motors. The extra output is this one and it's connected in parallel with the previous one and it's used to connect two Z stepper motors using the same stepper driver. If you will run Marlin firmware, the default Z output will also be assigned to output number 3, which means that the extruder motor will be assigned to output number 4. For the stepper drivers, it's possible to select between normal, UART and SPI modes, using different jumper configurations. With the jumpers installed this way, the drivers will be set to UART mode. And with the jumpers installed this way, the drivers will be set to SPI mode. For normal mode, the jumper configuration will vary according to the driver installed. And for that, you need to check the table of configuration for that specific driver. For the drivers that are compatible with the sensorless feature, and if you decide to enable it, there are jumpers that need to be used to disable the end stop signals. Those jumpers are located here. The board can also handle up to four hot ends. The hot end heaters can be connected here while the hot end temperature sensors can be connected here and the heat bed temperature sensor is connected here. As for the end stop connectors, there are 8 connectors in total. 6 can be used for end stops and 2 for filament runout sensors. 
It's also possible to connect up to six controllable fans and two always-on fans. The controllable outputs can be connected here. And the always-on fan outputs are these two connectors. The output voltage of each fan can be selected between 5, 12 or 24 volts using jumpers. If a jumper is installed this way, the output will be 5 volts. With the jumper this way, the output will be 12 volts. And with the jumper placed like this, the output will be 24 volts. There are also connectors for a BL touch here or for an inductive or capacitive sensor here. In this case, it's also possible to select between 5, 12 or 24 volts for the sensor. The selection is done with jumpers. If the jumper is installed this way, the sensor will receive 5 volts. If the jumper is installed this way, the sensor will receive 12 volts. And if the jumper is installed this way, the sensor will receive 24 volts. Next, we have a connector for RGB, one for power loss recovery, and one for automatic shutdown. If you want to connect a Raspberry Pi to this board, the Octopus has several ways available to connect it. One of them is the most common one which is using the USB Type-C connector. If you don't want to use the USB connection, it's also possible to connect the Raspberry Pi using UART or SPI. For that, the Octopus has a couple of header pins for those types of connections. On Big Tree Tech's GitHub page, there's a PDF which includes the information about the pins on these Heather connectors. As for display connections, the board has the traditional EXP connectors and also the one for TFT displays. There's also a connector for a PT100, however, the Octopus does not have the amplifier chip installed. For this to work, the 8-pin INA826 chip needs to be soldered on the board. Last but not least are the serial wire debug pins. This connector is only for programming, which means that for the printer installation you will not need this one. This board can run Clipper and Marlin from version 2.0.8.1 and up. Marlin later released version 2.0.9 for the Octopus 1.1. However, we recommend to use the latest Marlin version because there has been a few updates and fixes since then. The microcontroller has a bootloader already installed so that the firmware update can be done by the memory card. And that's it you guys, hope this video was useful. We will see you guys next time. Bye!